once upon a time, there was a single lonely stem cell. Now, a little stem cell did not know what it wanted to do when it grew up. It divided, divided some more. It made friends with its neighbors and it asked them, what kind of cell should I be? Some friends said, join us in the brain. We are the smart ones. Other friends said, join us in the heart because we care. <laughs> now, stem cells form detailed social networks to help them make decisions just like you and me. And these social networks are a critical component of the process through which stem cells organize themselves into amazingly complex tissues and organs. However, we do not fully understand the nature of these social networks, which is a key missing component in our understanding of how complex tissues like the brain are formed. Now, in my research, I study how stem cells transform into adult brain cells or neurons. By observing this process through a microscope, I capture how our stem cell hero and its friends morph and change as they navigate their ways to adulthood. I then develop and design software called Cytonet to automatically identify cells from microscope images and leverage a branch of mathematics called graph theory to capture the interactions among them. Now, by using Cytonet, I have shown that the social networks formed by young, naive stem cells are quite different from those formed by adult brain cells. Let me give you an example of how these networks were different. You may have heard of the Kevin Bacon number for actors, which is the number of degrees of separation of an actor from Kevin Bacon. Well, the average Kevin Bacon number in stem cell networks was quite low, which suggests that stem cells were well connected. This number increased as the stem cells transformed into neurons, which indicates that neurons were more cliquish. From these patterns, we can conclude that stem cells were quite homogenous and became much more clustered as they transformed into neurons. Why is this important? Well, several neurological disorders like schizophrenia and autism occur because the neurons in our brains form aberrant connections. And modeling the way that neurons develop from stem cells in a dish allows us to understand what happens in normal development and what goes wrong in disease. Further, the fundamental understanding we can obtain through experiments like mine will be crucial to design effective stem cell therapies for diseases like Parkinson's and stroke. Thus, I can help our single lonely stem cell to grow up, develop networks to cure disease, and live happily ever after. Thank you.